what are we looking at here? That concept has gone from paper to reality. I'm talking about the launch tower that China has copied from SpaceX. It's now complete. China's biggest ambition may be to outpace SpaceX, but will it really be that simple? Their tower design appears to carry significant risks, and their copying efforts won't stop there. CAS Space is also making progress with their Kinetica rocket. Let's dive into these updates on today's episode of Great SpaceX. In previous episodes, I discussed Cosmoleap's ambitious plan to replicate SpaceX's innovative Starship launch catch tower system. Since then, the company has made significant strides, securing funding to support the development of their own launch tower and rocket, Leap, also known as UHEN. Now, that vision has moved from concept to reality. Recently, videos shared on the platform X showcased China's completed launch tower which mirrors the design Cosmoleap had previously presented in 3D concept animations. This may be China's most accurate replication of SpaceX's system to date. Like SpaceX's tower, it features a modular steel frame structure and the chopstick system, designed to lift, lower, close, open, and rotate around a booster, nearly identical to SpaceX's setup. At first glance, the tower's similarity to SpaceX's design might raise questions about its authenticity. However, it's entirely real. Cosmoleap confirmed several critical technical developments in prior funding updates, including a chopstick clip tower recovery verification platform, a flight control computer named Firestone No. 1, and China's first domestically produced tower recovery controller, Little Firestone. The rapid progress Cosmoleap has demonstrated is remarkable, especially considering that the company, officially known as Da Hang Yue Qian, was only founded in March of this year. Reaching the current development stage in just a few months is unprecedented, underscoring the efficiency and speed of China's replication approach in aerospace. Now that the tower structure is complete, Cosmoleap will likely channel its efforts and resources into completing other vital subsystems. These include the launch mount, which secures the rocket before liftoff, and the tank farm, which will fuel and supply the rocket's propellant. Alongside this, work on the Leap rocket itself is expected to accelerate. If Cosmoleap maintains its current pace, a launch and landing attempt could be possible as soon as next year. China's aerospace sector, and companies like Cosmoleap in particular, benefit from considerable government support. This backing allows them to move forward without the environmental or public safety constraints that frequently delay U.S. companies. This freedom from restrictive oversight enables rapid, unfettered development at an impressive pace. In any case, SpaceX, a leader in the global aerospace industry, has become a focal point of imitation, especially in reusability and cost reduction efforts. Beyond Cosmoleap, many other Chinese rockets from private firms and state organizations alike reveal SpaceX's influence in their designs, particularly the newer versions of the Long March rocket family. This trend aligns with the analysis from Polaris Dawn Mission Commander Jared Isaacman, who tweeted about the strategic importance of SpaceX's advancements. He pointed out that Starship's rapid reusability and other capabilities, such as orbital refueling, represent a revolutionary leap in space capabilities. The high ground has always mattered, Isaac Min remarked, noting the value of these advancements in military, economic, and exploratory terms. He emphasized that these developments are impossible to ignore for the United States and certainly not for China. This escalating dynamic raises significant concerns for the U.S. aerospace sector. While China's government-driven model allows rapid progress, the U.S. regulatory environment can act as a brake on momentum. In particular, complex government procedures and layers of oversight often cause delays. Chief among these barriers is the Federal Aviation Administration, the body responsible for licensing rocket launches in the U.S. Its detailed review, investigation, and assessment process can take months. Additionally, environmental agencies frequently intervene under the guise of environmental protection, a valid priority but one that can sometimes overlook the strategic and competitive value of rapid aerospace advancements. SpaceX has encountered many of these regulatory challenges, particularly with its Starship project. Delays before flights 2 and 5 serve as reminders of these obstacles. Ironically, after finally approving Flight 5, the regulatory agencies admitted to errors in their previous assessments of SpaceX's processes acknowledging a lack of clarity that may have contributed to unnecessary setbacks. This illustrates the degree to which the U.S. regulatory landscape can inhibit progress, even as other countries are able to advance rapidly in similar technological areas. 
Despite these hurdles, SpaceX has achieved remarkable progress. In just a year and a half, with five test flights, they have accomplished several significant milestones, including the first vertical landings for Starship and catching the Super Heavy booster with the Mechazilla arms. However, to meet crucial upcoming goals, such as the Artemis 3 lunar mission in 2026 and the Mars colonization mission that follows, SpaceX will need to increase its development and launch frequency even further. Reforming agencies like the FAA to streamline their processes and reduce delays could play an essential role in accelerating SpaceX's timeline. If you agree that US aerospace innovation should be prioritized, comment, let SpaceX fly, and share your thoughts. And as always, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to stay informed on SpaceX's exciting journey toward a future where humanity can explore new frontiers in space. Now, when we consider the technological aspect, it's clear that China's attempts to replicate SpaceX's innovations won't be enough. Copying the outer design doesn't mean mastering the underlying technology, a gap visible in Cosmoleap's recently unveiled launch tower system. To begin with, the structure of Cosmoleap's chopstick arms appear unbalanced. The arms are longer than SpaceX's, making them more cumbersome and increasing operational risks. Strangely, these arms are paired with a medium-lift rocket roughly the size of a Falcon 9, which seems mismatched with such a large setup. Furthermore, their launch tower appears low and lacks a launch mount underneath, which may complicate tasks like stacking and launching. Perhaps the most concerning factor, however, is the tower's location. Based on videos, Cosmoleap's tower was constructed alarmingly close to residential buildings. This follows a common pattern in China's aerospace strategy, where facilities are often built deep inland and near populated areas, an approach that has garnered widespread criticism for safety concerns. There have been numerous incidents in China where rockets have come dangerously close to residential areas. Earlier this year, for example, a Long March 2C booster crashed near a populated area, releasing toxic gases. More recently, a test failure of the Tianlong-3 rocket caused significant vibrations felt near residential zones, even from a considerable distance. Though China's reports often state that no injuries occurred, the risks posed by these incidents remain high. With Cosmoleap's new launch tower so close to residential areas, potential hazards such as vibrations, fuel venting, debris, or even catastrophic explosions could pose serious threats to public safety. Additionally, the question arises, how will Cosmoleap expand its infrastructure in such a densely populated area? Demolishing neighboring zones isn't a viable long-term plan. In contrast, SpaceX situated its star-based launch tower in a remote area along the southern Texas coast, far from major populations. Yet, they continuously face regulatory delays from U.S. government agencies. If Cosmoleap's tower were held to similar U.S. safety and regulatory standards, it's likely it would never be approved for use. Observing Cosmoleap's rapid, risk-laden growth highlights a stark difference between their approach and SpaceX's model of sustainable, regulation-compliant expansion. Chinese companies may indeed grow quickly, but without strong foundations and adherence to long-term safety standards, they risk facing critical failures. Such incidents could lead to shaken investor confidence, potentially causing projects and even entire companies to collapse just as quickly as they grew. This, ultimately, is why these copycats are unlikely to ever surpass SpaceX. However, their ambitions persist. In addition to Cosmoleap's developments, another Chinese company, CAS Space, is also making strides with its own rocket advancements. At 11.03 p.m. UTC, or 6.03 p.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time on November 10th, CAS Space launched its Kinetica 1, or the Jian-1 rocket from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, deploying 15 satellites into orbit, including the Jinlin-1 satellite for Changguang Satellite Technology, or CGST. The launch took place in the Dongfeng Commercial Space Innovation Test Area, an area reserved for Chinese commercial aerospace companies, many of which are emulating SpaceX's models and methods. This launch marks Kinetica 1's third mission this year, and the fifth since its debut in July of 2022. Standing 30 meters tall with a 2.65 meter diameter, Kinetica 1 is powered by a solid rocket engine, has a liftoff thrust of 135 tons, and can carry payloads of up to 1.5 tons to a 500 kilometer sun synchronous orbit. This launch series is part of CAS Space's preparation to transition to the Kinetica 2, slated for September of 2025, with upgraded capabilities, which include 7.8 tons to SSO and 12 tons to low Earth orbit. By late 2026, 
2026, the company aims to achieve full reusability for Kinetica 2, likely adopting grid fins, landing legs similar to Falcon 9, and possibly methane fuel like SpaceX's Starship. The ultimate goal is the Kinetica 3, capable of launching 20 tons to SSO, and is fully reusable. CAS Space is ramping up its launch frequency and plans to schedule 5 to 8 flights annually once Kinetica 2 is operational, with ambitions to serve international customers thereafter. Despite these ambitious plans, numerous attempts to replicate SpaceX's approach have failed. Time will reveal what lies ahead for CAS Space, Cosmoleap, and other ambitious imitators in China's aerospace sector. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.